What if we told you that the ending of Altair's life could have been much, much darker than we have seen? Yes, we are back with episode 2 of ATA Untold Memories, our series dedicated to all the Assassin's Creed cut or alternative content that never saw the light of day, and this video will be fully focused on the information we were able to gather about the cancelled project Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy that eventually turned into Assassin's Creed Revelations, including three cut codex entries from Altair's final days that were recently shared by none other than Darby McDavid, which of course we analyzed and compared to what remained of them in Revelation's final version. So let's not wait any longer and let's dive into episode 2 of ATA Untold Memories. So yes, today we're going to have a look, or shall we say listen, to some entries of an unreleased document from an unreleased Assassin's Creed game voiced by narrative director Darby McDavid. Alright, let's unpack all that. We are talking about Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy, which was a game for the Nintendo 3DS console developed around early 2010 for about 5 months, while Ubisoft was also developing Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and it never saw the light of day because at some point Ubisoft decided to use some of its narrative and premise for a new mainline title which we now know as Assassin's Creed Revelations. At the helm of Lost Legacy's narrative was Darby McDavid, who as we know went on to become lead writer on Revelations, and through the years, that's more than a decade, Darby has shared some bits and bobs about the story the Lost Legacy was meant to feature. It would be set a few years prior, in 1507 instead of Revelations 1511, but Ezio Auditore da Firenze would have been the main character and he would have traveled to Masyaf to discover the origins of the Assassin's Brotherhood with some potential connections to Altair's story from the first Assassin's Creed game. As you can see, the overall premise was very similar to a part of the story that we see in Revelations, and in Lost Legacy 2 we would have seen Ezio travel to Constantinople, but during a Q&A on the now defunct platform Assassin's Creed Initiates, Darby stated that the script of Lost Legacy almost had nothing to do with what we see in Revelations, with all the major characters being different, except from Suleiman the Magnificent, who would have been even younger than how we see him in Revelations. As a 3DS game, Lost Legacy was not meant to have any modern day sequence and no playable Altair memories as well, both of which were added when the game was turned into a AAA one, but instead it was meant to have a number of collections of documents, such as a historical database, a 30 entries journal by Niccolo Polo featuring his brother Maffeo and their meeting with Altair, meaning that they were meant to be involved in Lost Legacy as well somehow, along with some extra codex pages written by Altair that would have covered the last part of his life as it was intended for Lost Legacy, and plot twist, Darby did actually read the last three entries of these non-canon extra Altair codex pages live, during one of the Let's Talk Assassin's Creed livestreams dedicated to the AC Community Relief Fundraiser, where he shared a lot of insight on Assassin's Creed Revelations and some of the info about Lost Legacy that we reported today, and of course you can and find a link for the live stream in the description. So here are the three final Altair Codex entries from Lost Legacy's cut script as they were read by none other than Darby McDevitt himself. So Altair writes, We have gathered, discussed, and dispersed. The verdict is final. Masyaf will be abandoned. Our beloved castle, castle, so useful for so long, is now a beacon for those who would see us annihilated. The assassins will operate in shadows, spread out over continents, living in secret among the people we protect, not above them. Step by step, we will rout the Templars. A young man named Niccolo will return our message to the west, first to Constantinople, then to Venezia. My sons have done the same through northern Africa. This is how it must happen. This is how our message will be spread. On the strength of our message, not our steel. I am well beyond the twilight of my life. It is midnight, and there are no stars and no moon to see by. No man should live as long as this. My sons, old enough to be grandfathers, and my Maria so gone so long. Which of my memories of her are true, and which were projections of that accursed apple? Did I bury her with my own hands, or delegate this task to another? Damn that artifact. Twenty years of my life stolen, replaced by insipid fables and tantalizing dreams. Final entry. Wow. I have done my part. 
If only I had found the modesty to speak these words earlier, I might have died sooner, yet lived a fuller life. But the apple lured me away with lies. You will solve the riddle, Altair. You will defeat the Templars and find the secret of the ones who came before. I was always one step away, brushing my fingertips against the truth, so close to understanding. And now I'm at the end of my journey. My hands are empty, and I am alone. To me, all of this is super interesting and it does shed some light into what was planned to do and why it never came to be and was adjusted and changed. It's why we have started Untold Memories as a series after all. So what we're seeing here is a much grimmer Altair than what we see in the Codex in Assassin's Creed 2 and in his memories in Revelations. An Altair that has pretty much gone mad because of his use of the Apple of Eden, which has pretty much taken away everything from his life, including his memories in a way, and when he realizes it, it's already too late. In the first of these new entries, we see Altair taking notes on how it was decided that Masyaf would have been abandoned as it was a beacon that attracted enemies too easily, and how the assassins would have started hiding in the shadows, spreading across the world secretly while holding tightly to their creed. It's a page that in a way mirrors pages 6 and 18 of the Codex in Assassin's Creed 2 in terms of Altair's new direction for the Brotherhood, but we can also see how some of these words eventually were repurposed in the Secret Crusade novel where it stated that Altair's vision was that the assassins would go out into the world and operate among the people and not above them. In this early version of the story, the Polo brothers were meant to take the Creed's message to Constantinople and then Venezia, which happened in a fairly similar way in Revelations, while Altair's sons would have spread the word in North Africa, which was also kept in Revelations, where it stated that Darim and the family of his assassinated brother Seth moved to Alexandria in Egypt. The second to last extra page of Altair's Codex is where we can see this much darker tone for what concerns Altair's interaction with the Apple. He realizes that he has lived much longer than he should have, so much so that his sons are so old that they could be grandfathers, which wasn't properly the case in Revelations. But more importantly, Altair in this early version of the story realizes that spending so much time with the Apple has corrupted him. He can't distinguish fact from fiction. He can't remember which of his memories about his family are real, all of which was very much toned down or removed completely in Revelations. But it's the final cut page of Altair's Codex that is the grimmest but also has been somewhat inherited by revelations. Altair wishes he could have said, quote unquote, I have done my part. He wishes he could have accepted his role was over and ditched the apple, but in this version of Lost Legacy's story, he didn't. And interestingly enough, the same wording but for a different purpose carried over to revelations in the Passing the Torch memory, where Altair said that when he was younger, he thought the creed would have brought an end to all conflicts and then wondered if only I had possessed the humility to say to myself I have seen enough for one life, I have done my part. Like I said, similar wording, different meanings of course. In the Lost Legacy script, Altair is writing a document when it's already over. He has already fallen to the tricks of the Apple, which kept telling him he would have found a way to defeat the Templars and to know more about the Isu without ever giving him a final answer until it was too late. He had lived too long, his memories were scrambled, and worst of all, he was alone and regretful. Thankfully, it wasn't the same in Revelations. Altair did pass away alone in a memory very much intentionally called Lost Legacy, but it was by choice, in a much lighter tone and after a beautiful scene where he passed the torch to his son Durin. See, this is why I enjoy so much having a look at the cut content for the various Assassin's Creed releases. You could find information, attempts and directions that you would have never expected and you could either agree with the choices that were made if the cut content sounded a little rough around the edges or wonder why it was dished if it seemed like a great idea. One such cut content was a monologue by Hatem Kenway from Assassin's Creed 3 where he reconciled killing with who he is, which we reported and showed in the first episode of this series and that you can see on screen right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video.